Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about Sparks EA's Reusable Asset Service, or RAS. So we've done a couple of videos. One of them was deploying a Sparks SQL Server, and the next was deploying, installing and deploying ProCloud Server. In this session, we're going to connect the Sparks Reusable Asset Service to that backend database via ProCloud Server. Now, I must start out by stating that this is gonna be a three-part series. Essentially, I am putting eight to 12 hours of my course material into under 60 minutes across three different videos. So I'll put the links, I'll try to link them together so you can move between those. I might put together a playlist, so look for that as we're going forward. As usual in these videos, I tell you to go to the Spark Start tab, go to Help, and click the Online Help, and you get to Spark CA Welcome page. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Modeling Fundamentals, and then we're going to go to Manage Model Change, and we're going to select on RAS. So if you want to read ahead, go to this page, go down through it, read ahead, Play and practice as you want to. So what is Reusable Asset Ser Service, or RAS? It, it's just like it sounds. It's a deployable component that allows you to integrate between your desktop tooling through a service provider, and it's multi-tenant, supports multi-tenant locally or in, the in a cloud. I run it also on Microsoft Azure, runs just as well on AWS Cloud, haven't deployed it on Google Cloud, but any cloud or remote server, including your local server, you're able to run RAS. And then it connects to any data technology. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's go to the Publish tab, and under Model Exchange Group or Panel, we're going to select Reusable Asset Service. All right, there we go. You get this workspace dialog that pops up where you can connect to any registry, All right? So I'm gonna select the triple dots and it brings in the same cloud connection dialog box used to access cloud, All right? So name it anything you want. You could call this demo registry. You could just call it but you want to make sure you give it a, a meaningful name because you don't want a bunch of, of the same names having registry in them. So this is the UML operator demo registry, right? Give it any name you want. Again, we're using the same login parameters through uh, ProCloud Server. And we're going to use the alias for connecting to this database, all right? So for me, model name, the alias is the same as the database name. So we're going to hit OK. Now, if the registry is empty, you're going to get this dialog box that says, hey, it does not contain any storage. So what to do? Click New Storage to create storage and then register packages. All right, thank you very much. We're going to hit OK. And in order to create a storage, because there's no storage here, hit the drop down box, it's empty. You just select this icon right here, new storage, create a new storage and registry. And you get this dialog that pops up and you wanna give the registry, the storage area in the registry, a unique name, all right? And we're just gonna call this um, reference data, data. There we go. Content is reference data library, right? So we select this, leave draft, we're not going to put any password protection on this. Leave that up to your administrators, what they want to do. And we're going to select OK. And if you need any help, select Help. And as usual, you'll get to Spark's website to help you further understand what to do next. All right, I'm going to hit OK. Create storage reference data that can be accessed by all users. Yes. And then storage created successfully in registry. There you go, it's called reference data, right? Now we haven't imported any reference data yet. We're gonna do that next. 
So let's go get some reference data to bring into our reusable asset service. So we're gonna go to the start page. We're gonna go to our demo project that we've been using over the last several sessions. And in here, we've got a lot of reference data that we wanna reuse. To better expose, I'm gonna get out of the default Sparks workspace layout, and I'm gonna to go to mine, which is common. There we go. And when that loads, there we go. We are going to look at what reference data we wanna bring in, all right? So I go to resources, because I've got the resource tab and the browser's over on the right side. I can see I have some custom templates, fragments, and some other uh, templates that I've created, reporting templates. And I'll cover reporting in a later session, but we have some reporting templates there. We have some patterns that we wanna bring in. And let's go to settings, UML types. We have some tag values that we wanna bring in. I wanna bring all of those over to my RAS SQL instance. And I have some other UML types, some other reference data that I wanna bring in. So in order to export the reference data from the project that I wanna reuse across other projects, I am going to go to the model pattern. I'm gonna to go to transport, transfer rather, and I'm gonna to go to export reference data. And here's where I'm gonna select the reference data that I wanna export. So let's go through this export reference dialog box. General types, I don't have any custom general types, so I don't need anything from there. People, I wanna bring in all of the resources from the demo project that we use for demonstration. Project indicators, didn't make any changes there, so I don't need that. I can take all of the Sparks factory stuff. Same thing with maintenance. Don't think I created anything there. UML types, I don't need cardinality, but I want tag values and I want patterns, right? Estimating factors, cover this in a more advanced session, but you can use Sparks to do estimating. So um, close that. Security, don't touch that, unless you know what you're doing. Project, let's see here. I want model images, and I definitely want the glossary, right? Let's scroll down. Matrix profiles, nothing there. Link documents, no. Document templates, yes. I want all of them. These are the reporting templates that, we've, that I've created. And template resources, didn't do anything there. HTML, didn't do anything there. Uh, model data types, definitely didn't do anything there yet. Technology, model data types, nothing there. Uh, let's see here. Definitely want my automated scripts. And we'll cover scripting and automation in a later session. But for this demo, I want to bring those over. So we're going to hit export. And we're going to go to where you store your reference data. All right, in my particular case, I have it on my OneDrive. Sparks model reference data I've got in this folder. I'm going to grab this name and I'm going to... My naming convention, I want to keep or archive the other ones. So today is July 4th. And I like to put a date on it because sometimes I will step on this after this date, like this one here I stepped on. That's why the naming convention, I like to keep it. Hey, when did I create this? And this will make more sense in a moment. And you use your own convention as you're going forward. So I'm going to hit save. And there it is. It's now in that repository. So let's go back over to our other UMLO demo cloud. I could hit SQL and do exactly the same thing that I'm going to do. I could go into any repository and do what we're getting ready to do next. So I'm going to go into UML demo the cloud using ProCloud Server. And there we go. All right. So I am going to go to publish usable asset service, hit login. Remembers the last thing that I had, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. And I only have one storage, so it's the only one that's showing right now. And because we're in the reference data storage area, when I select register, it's going to bring up the register reference data library dialog box. I'm going to hit the triple dots. We're going to go from file system. We're going to find the reference data that we want to import. We're going to hit open. 
And we're going to add some comments in here about what this reference data file is. So we've typed in some comments in here. We're going to hit register. And it's going to state uh, that, that this it thinks this file already exists. It might be because of a test. Otherwise, you're just going to hit yes. And this is now registered, right? So we can check that by knowing that we're in reference data. You're not going to see anything under asset properties or content. But if you go to storage files, there it is right there, because this is a file that's being stored in the Sparks RAS repository. All right, so a couple of points to note. It's important to put comments in every file that you're putting in to explain to the users, the modelers that are going to reuse this data, what this particular file is. And that goes for all assets. Describe what you're uploading to RAS, Reusable Asset Service, and so your modelers can understand what they're getting, especially reference data. When it comes to models, we'll show you in a second, you'll have a lot more asset properties to explain that. But for storage files, it's pretty short and sweet. All right. Now, another thing is if we go to project and we go here, you see that RAS created this reference data package over here that's only applicable to the SQL instance that is hosting RAS storage. And you're going to see more as we're adding more storage to this RAS instance. Next, we're going to go to a completely different project. We're going to go to our demo local demo project. And in this project, we are going to go to a particular diagram, which we want to reuse across other instances. So we're going to register this diagram in our reusable asset service. All right, so we're going to log into the same instance over in that SQL database. And when I get there, you can see we just have reference data. We're going to add another storage area. So again, you click up on new storage, create a new storage and registry. This one we're going to call mod, just simply model or model reuse, right? Or training models. There we go. That's even better. Be descriptive in your naming of your storage areas, because after a while, you may have a lot of different storage areas for different things. So have meaningful names. So we're using the content type model package. Last time we used reference data. I'm not going to talk about Learning Center Library or Source Code Library in this session. That's for more advanced. We're going to use model package. Status is draft. We're not going to put any constraints on accessing this, and we're going to hit OK. Yes, I want to do that. Thank you very much. And now we have two storage areas, one for reference data and one for training models. And if we look over, when we go back to the SQL instance for RAS, you're going to see that it created a new storage area. So I just want to preface that before we get there. But first, we need to register this particular model. So I'm on the model I want to register. Right. I'm going to select register and I'm going to get a dialog box that pops up that's on that package. All right. Um, as far as checking dependencies, I can select that. There are no dependencies, so nothing to worry about. And I want to give this a version number and I'm going to add some comments and notes about this particular model. So I've added some notes. It's very important that you tell stakeholders where the particular version came from. So in this case, I'm stating that this came from UML operator local and probably should go demo project. This diagram is for training only. And then some other additional notes here. Let's go ahead and register. Yes, there we go. It is now registered. So in this case, because we're in the model type storage area, I have asset properties. So version 01 by this author on this date and time, comments, etc. Now, if I go, we're going to log back into the other UML cloud environment, could have come in through the SQL environment. You'll notice that RAS now has not only the reference data, but it added a training models storage area 
with one diagram in it. Now this is just a property artifact. This doesn't get you to anything, but it's kind of interesting because you'll see the metadata, a GUID associated to the particular reference file, some other metadata. The version is incorrect, which is interesting. I never usually look at that, but you can type notes here and I recommend that Okay, I checked this one in, you know, checked in or notes about what the model is. It may be a copy and paste of the other property notes you had, right? So I could go to reusable asset service. We're going to go ahead and log into this particular instance. We're going to go down to training models. I can come down here, grab these notes that are right here, go over to here, paste those notes in and now they're available there. So um, now this model is ready for other models to modelers to access. And we'll do that in a, in a short period of time here. So what I want to do is I want to create another storage area while we're in this instance. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it from a different instance. I'm now over in my local project instance where I build and manage patterns, right? So this is a very simple pattern. It's 10 points in here that have been using a style guide to make circles in here, custom model and make circles. And these are discussion points that modelers can use to bring into diagrams for collaboration, presentations and stakeholder discussions, all right? So just call it discussion points. Right. We're going to go ahead and register this particular pattern in RAS. So from this instance, you can connect from any instance. Instance, I'm going to go to publish reusable asset. We're going to log into the same asset repository. And I'm in it now. We're going to create another storage area for pattern. So select this icon up here. It's going to be called uh, patterns. And again, we're using the model package storage content type draft. I'm not putting any access constraints. Usually you would on things that you don't want other modelers to access or manage. And I'm going to hit okay. Yes, please create it. And there we go. Now we're in the patterns one. So I'm on the diagram that I, the model that I want to register. So I'm gonna come over and select register. It's, it's on it so it knows which package to register. Pending status, I could select check dependencies. There are no dependencies, so I'm not worried about it. And I want to give it a version number. I always like to start at 01, although this one's at 08. But for this demo, we're gonna start at 01. Put some comments and some notes in here next. All right, we've added a version. We added a comment basically stating that this model came from a local instance, not from another SQL instance. And some notes in here that the readers must or should read in order to properly use this, basically giving them the directions. It's best to use the pattern from the resources rather than directly from this. And if you're going to use directly from this model instance, and you'll see this in a moment, project, be sure when you're doing a control C to copy that you control shift V create as new in order to strip GUIDs and not, you know, have those GUID conflicts. And I'll show you that again in a moment. So we're going to select register. Yes, please register. There we go. It's done. Have my metadata, my notes. So anybody coming to this particular instance is able to look at it. They can go to contents. They can double click. Oh, it's a bunch of circles with one through 10 in it. And here's the goods for each one of the components that are used. No dependencies, no additional technologies, no attached storage files, and we could do reviews. Usually I like to say as a best practice when a modeler is checking something in, that they go over to review and the very first review that's going to be there is just an explanation. Again, it could be a copy and paste of this particular, these particular words that are here and I'm control C control, uh, go back over to review. 
in here, just typing that in there and hitting save. That way, if folks missed it here, when they go over to review, they'll see this here. And if they want to add additional comments, ask questions and so on, they're able to start a discussion here in the review or give you a review on a particular model or pattern that you're sharing. All right, we're going to wrap up part one. And in the next session, which is part two of three, we're going to talk about reuse in RAS. So I look forward to seeing you over there. Please leave comments down below. You can ask questions there. I'll try to get back to you. Thanks very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next session.